everybody Mark Strangers here how's everybody doing today so finally the big build is now complete I've been waiting a long time to finally get this build started and yes it's now complete so this is my first attempt at actually doing a custom background so I was very excited about doing this and showing you guys I think the enclosure came out well I'm actually really happy with it for the first time and uh, yeah, I think I'll definitely be doing some more projects like this in the future. So let's not waste some more time. And uh, yeah, this is the big build. The Vivarium I am using is an Exoterra 60 by 45 by 45. I start by cleaning the tank with an alcohol based cleaning solution that could compromise anything from sticking to the glass. Next is to drill a hole for the fogging unit tube. Here I'm using a diamond tip drill piece. It's always best to make a template so you don't slip on the glass and scratch it. Spray with water and drill. I then installed the tube. I siliconed rubber washers either side and worked out roughly where I wanted the tube to run. I measured and taped where I wanted the background to stop so I could incorporate a custom made hide for the tarantula. I placed random cork bark onto the back first. You should take your time doing this. I had an idea of what I wanted the finished product to look like. Once everything was in, I used waterproof foam filler to hold everything in place. Once the foam had cured, usually within 24 hours, I had the long process of cutting away and shaping the foam. This is important as the silicone won't stick to the smooth, shiny surface. I also incorporated some driftwood to add some depth and character to the background. I repeated the process on each side of the tank. This is the background ready for silicon. I also created a cave like hide. The spider can go deep down into the substrate. The glass is clear at the back so I can see her, but doesn't let in any light she will feel safe and is ideal for this species. For the background, I'll be using a dried out mix of substrate with bark and moss. This has to be done dry to stick to the silicon. Now for the messiest part. Here I'm using mold resistant silicon. Put a generous amount down and spread the silicon so all the foam is covered. Definitely wear rubber gloves for this as it is a nightmare to wash off. I also did this in sections and added generous amounts of substrate. Leave this for about 20 minutes or so. I let the silicon cure for about eight hours and went back to do some finishing touches making sure every bit of foam is covered. Again, this is very time consuming, but will be well worth it in the end 
if you want a professional finish. Then it was time to add vines. I sourced these ones from the woods. These are placed in boiling water and dried as treatment. I also added vines I made myself. I stuck these down with a strong super glue and covered with substrate. And this is it. I think the vines add that little bit more to the background. I can visualize the plants growing and climbing around the vines. For substrate, I'm using earth mix, which is packed full of natural minerals and nutrients for the long-term health of the plants. I also mixed in activated charcoal, sand, cocoa fiber, and sphagnum moss. I've picked a variety of plants, lots of climbers, which will hopefully in time fill out the enclosure like a dense rainforest. First I add the hydro clay balls for the false bottom, which acts as a drainage system. It also releases water back into the substrate. I use this screen mesh to separate the substrate. I cut it oversized so that the substrate does not fall into the false bottom. Once I'm happy with the way it fits, I add the main substrate. The enclosure is really coming together now. Time to add the plants. I'm hoping the plants will grow into and around the background. There are plenty of anchor points for the ivy which should explode in this enclosure. This piece of wood is from a dead bonsai tree. I love the way it twirls around, perfect for this devil's ivy, which I carefully wrap around it. I added the larger plants at the back of the enclosure. Time to add some colour with this really nice air plant. Air plants can be wedged into gaps as they don't have roots. They get their water by absorbing it through the leaves. Time to add some more ivy. I'm hoping this will climb up the side and add more cover to the entrance of the hide. After all the plants are in, I'll give them a good water. When having live plants, be careful not to overwater them. You can bring back an underwatered plant, but overwatering them will drown them and they will die. Now time to make the enclosure bioactive by adding isopods and springtails. I'm also adding dried leaf litter for the forest floor, which is good for both isopods and the substrate. First I add giant orange wood lice. And then the springtails. These are my cleanup crew and what makes the bioactive enclosure. And finally, the finishing touch, leaf litter. I think this completes the setup, adds more colour and has a purpose.
So I hope you enjoyed that guys. Like I said, the uh, yeah, I think it came out really nice. I'm gonna wait for um, a month or two until I put the spider in. I want the plants to establish themselves, get nice and healthy and strong before adding the spider in there. So uh, yeah, I'll be doing a video on the rehousing that one too. Also, just before I go, I'd just like to thank Sidex Francis for becoming a member to Mark Strangers. Thank you so much, uh, Francis. If you'd like to support this channel more, you can also become a member. Alright guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon.